Welcome everyone, Quistine here with a discussion about World of Warcraft Classic Fresh Season of Mastery. I'm going to be talking about questing, the experience game that Blizzard has implemented in the open beta, which you can just download from the battle and launcher point. People ask me, how do I get in the beta? It's like, yeah, just get it from the client and you can play it. You don't need, even need to have a subscription. Uh, they've increased the experience gain in the beta. I don't think it's enough. I think they should go for further. And then to talk about world buffs, talk about loot as well and the impact that their decisions with respect to world buffs, raiding uh, and loot, what uh, impact that will have on the game and on the community. To talk about the questing situation, one of the changes that Blizzard implemented in the Classic Beta this week was increasing the extra experience gained from quests from 25%, which was at per Blizzard statement, uh, similar to what we were getting in PVC, they increased that from 95% to 40%. Now that's a step in the right direction, but it's also not enough. 40% extra experience might seem like a lot, but the reality is there's plenty of quests that are just really annoying to deal with for uh, various reasons, like either you have to travel a very long way, or you have uh, stuff like this, patrolling Westfall, it's like, oh, go get eight null paws. And the problem with these null paws is that you have to kill a lot of gnolls to get this because they don't have 100% drop chance. And that can be genuinely frustrating to deal with. And this is one of the better quests. Like the Westfall quests are significantly better than quests in other zones. And here's the thing about leveling in Classic. Blizzard should, and I think they want to incentivize people uh, to do quests, to play in open world, to play, uh, to have that dynamic leveling experience, as opposed to just locking themselves in a dungeon and leveling there. But here's the thing, 40% extra quest experience is not gonna beat Scarlet Monastery uh, mob grinding. You're not even killing the bosses if you're doing that. You're spending 24 hours in Scarlet Monastery just killing mobs over and over again. Uh, same with Zulfarak. Same with BRD or LBRS, you're just doing that over and over and over again, and it is the, by far the fastest and most efficient way to level. 40% extra quest experience is not enough to compare with that, especially given that a lot of vanilla quests can be very frustrating. I think um, that Blizzard should not go the route that some people suggest, which is like, oh, limit the number of dungeons people can do better day. I disagree with that because I think that it's a really shitty way to try and solve the problem. It's like, oh, we know dungeon leveling is very quick and efficient, so it's like we're just going to screw you over and prevent you from doing it by limit limiting the number of dungeons you can do per day to 30. Now, 30 is actually a pretty large number, to be very clear. You need to be doing like six hours straight of back-to-back -back dungeons uh, in a very timely fashion to get to that uh, to that uh, uh, to that limit. So it's quite a lot for an average player. Which means, like, for for a hardcore player, like, say, myself, we would obviously blow past that cap for, for an average player six hours, and not everyone is going to do dungeons that quickly to reach that cap in six hours. Think of seven, eight. Uh, for an average player, they're likely never to reach that cap, and so dungeon level, they're not really going to be affected. It's not really going to matter that much for them in terms of how many dungeons they can do. Uh, per day and dungeon leveling will still be the fastest most efficient way uh, to level i'm not saying dungeon leveling should be thrown out uh, out the gate but i'm saying that how blizzard handles this is important there's plenty of dungeon quests that people didn't give a crap about to do in vanilla leveling because it wasn't worth the time to get them and to do them to clear a full dm to clear a full scarlet monastery to, to get all those quests it wasn't worth the time when you could just as well Go in there, pull pretty much all of Scarlet Cathedral, or do significant pulls of Scarlet Cathedral in Armory, uh, kill uh, and kill the mobs very quickly in less than 12 minutes. I mean, I was doing. We were getting locked out in Scarlet Monastery, and we di and I didn't have the most efficient leveling group because we had uh, we had only two warriors. We didn't have and a rogue. Like we had a rogue, the rogue slowing us down. We would have been much faster if we had three warriors. Uh, as opposed to just two. So that is something that did play a role in how things uh, were for us. But still, 24 hours, uh, Scarlet Monastery, 24 hours, Old Frack, etc, etc, etc. Now I think increasing the quest experience significantly to a significantly higher degree would be the play here. I would more than double it. Like, if this was 200%, believe it or not, it would not be detrimental. It would it would make it more powerful for all the issues with quests themselves. And 
That's the thing. I would not just, like, if I was on Blizzard Shoes, this is what I'd do. I wouldn't just increase the experience by that much. I'd also make the drop chances to be higher. I'd make uh, certain mobs, name mobs, spawn much faster because you have crowds. You hogger with all that stuff. People waiting in line, even when there's an enormous number of players, people just getting in line. That's ridiculous. And it's an issue. Like, you just have people spawn camping in line. You don't want that to happen um, uh, when it comes to, to leveling in Classic. Because... You want to give people incentives to quest because giving people incentives to quest means that they're running around the world, doing stuff, meeting other players, and that is how we played vanilla. This is, by the way, an important uh, factor here. Making classic like vanilla isn't just about like having the same values. It's not like that because people have changed. Clearly, the way people play the game has uh, has changed. So you should change the game to better reflect how people are going to play it today and try and recreate that kind of experience because the experience back then is you would quest sure you would do some dungeons a quest run of um, uh, say wailing caverns for instance if you're horde or a dead mines here and there are a couple of dungeons not a ridiculous amount not like back to back 10 20 dead mines or something like that not stuff like that uh, so you would quest uh, you would go in the open world, you would do a couple of dungeons, and you would meet people along the way, dynamically. You want to give people a reason to do that, to go in the open world, not just have these groups, and not just have everything, um, uh, not, not just have people going into dungeons and locking themselves in with their special groups, uh, or their friends, and never really interacting with someone else, because that is a problem, it's a community problem, and I think Blizzard should stop, start caring about that. That's what I have to say with regards uh, to questing. It is a welcome change, what they're doing. It is a welcome that they're increasing the quest experience to 40%, as they have done here. In point of fact, I am fairly certain that Blizzard already knew 25% was not going to be enough. Hell, they might even know 40% there is not going to be enough, but they want to see how people react. They want to get the community reaction. They want to see what people have to say before they're rolling out some bigger changes. Like they started with a value similar to TBC. But it's not really similar to TBC because TBC questing is much better. You have more quests, you have more quest givers, elite mobs are no longer elite, all that kind of stuff. You have less experience required. Uh, so it's not like TBC. There's a lot more to it than just rolling a 25% buff and saying, oh, that's going to be enough. Uh, you need to do more. And hell, even with TBC questing, like, one of it, even with TBC questing, it isn't enough because people lock themselves in TBC dungeons didn't give a crap about the quest. There's so many people I leveled to 70, from 60 to 70, didn't touch a single quest in Fralmar or Honor Hold, or maybe one or two, and then did those quests at 70 for the sake of their reputation. That's something, like, you don't want all of that to happen. Blizzard should work on this, should improve on this, should increase the experience. I don't think even Wrath experience games would be enough, because even Wrath people would just lock themselves in dungeons. And I think that's something Blizzard wants to avoid and should want to avoid, where you have these small groups of people that don't give a crap about the world, the community, or anything like that. It's just their own little perfect world, and that's the best way to play the game, because that's the most efficient way to play the game. That shouldn't be the case. With respect to loot, their decision to not change drop chances on the idea that, oh, that uh, the notion of having full best and slot gear uh, before the next tier comes out was never really in play for a very large portion of World of Warcraft And this is absolutely a true statement if you're Especially if you're thinking about vanilla and burn crusade I think the only time or the first time when a large number of guilds and certainly Less than 20 percent, but a large number of guilds were able to get something close to best in slot From one tier before the next one came out was with Sunwall Plateau that was in TBC and that was almost a year of waiting, like, what, 11 months, 10 months, 10 plus months of waiting bef between the release of Black Temple and the release of Sunwell Plateau. Of course, it's a bit more complicated than that, but a lot of guilds were able to get Warglaive, Skulls of Gul'dan, all the weapons, all the gear from Tier 6 before Sunwell Plateau came out. And that's the only situation it happened. It certainly didn't happen in vanilla. If you're telling me people killed Kel'Thuzad, or the vast majority of guilds killed Kel'Thuzad with uh, Tier 2 or Tier 2.5 best in slot, or Tier 2 plus Tier 2.5 best in slot, before Nax came out, uh, no, that simply didn't happen. So it is in line with what how things were being done back in the day. But here's the thing about that. That's all well and good, and I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with the decision, but here's the issue. 
they're adding the honor system on day one. Now the question with that is, are they gonna add the honor, the PVP rewards from day one? If they are, then the most efficient thing people can do, the best things, everyone on every skill level, doesn't matter if you're in an average guild or a hardcore guild, but for every single player in every single guild, the best thing that they'll do that will be really good for them will be to PVP, uh, to do a lot of battlegrounds and get all that PVP gear. I'm not talking here high warlord gear, Obviously, not everyone's going to get that, but even the lower tier gear is going to be very significant. Now, pushing people into doing battlegrounds, that's not the worst decisions Blizz uh, B uh, decision Blizzard could make in terms of gearing. It kind of cuts into the, uh, their argument, though, that they don't want to uh, increase the drop chances of items because they want people to have best in slot. Well, then PvP items will be best in slot unless you get lucky and get the Thunder Fury or Curry or all that unless you have that. Now, to be fair, you'd still be doing multi core even with AQ out, so does it really matter all that much? Uh, it does, I feel. I, I think that there's the potential for a better community interactions because there will be more people doing battlegrounds, all that good stuff. But there's also an issue. Uh, there's the issue that what people will be incentivized in doing, and you can be damn certain this is gonna be the case if they release PVP items from day one, uh, instead of just having the honor system battlegrounds. It's one thing to say, oh, we're going to have the honor system, we're going to have battlegrounds, but we're not going to have PV PvP rewards until this particular point. Or they roll them out gradually, they don't introduce them all at once at the same time. If they did that, things would be better. But if they have them from the very start, I can tell you without a shadow of doubt that what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of people just... Uh, spamming BGs and not giving crap to actually play matches properly, but just doing all they can to get their rank sire, to get honor, uh, to be able to afford the gear. And that might be very detrimental to the health of, of the game. Now, why are we gonna have though in Classic Fresh? Are we gonna get the Molten Core and then three months later, Blackwing Lair, three months after that, AQ, three months after that, um, an extra MS, is that how this is going to play out? Will it be longer? That's not too terrible of a period considering the time we, we spent. Like, it was, what, on average five months? So, yeah, it's shorter, quite a bit shorter, actually, but it's not going to be the end of the world, at least for people that are doing it from day one. But the thing is, not everyone's going to do it for a, for, from day one. Not everyone's going to clear Molten Core in week one, certainly with faster que uh, questing, with faster leveling. Uh, playing more people are gonna do Molten Core, at least some of it, uh, week one, though clearing Rag Ragnaros with level 58s, I'm curious to see whether or not that will happen. I'm sure for the very best guilds, that will absolutely happen to a certain degree. It's probably gonna be harder, though. So keep in mind, we didn't have world buffs when we were doing Molten Core week one, and we had a bunch of low-level characters, it wasn't too much, too much of an issue, but with higher HP, well, Things can hurt. Like I'm sure a lot of guilds would not have been able to deal with Ragnaros' sons week one of the guilds that uh, that did it. I mean, plenty of people struggled with Domo as it was and other bosses. Uh, so I think the loot decision is not in itself bad. I think when you're looking, however, at the overall picture, well, it's not necessarily the greatest one and there can be a significantly detrimental impact on the community and on the game that I think Blizzard should just tread uh, carefully in terms of what they're doing here with terms of loot, especially PvP loot. Uh, I'm not saying, oh, increase the drop chances of stuff. I don't necessarily think that's the ideal uh, option or give us more tier items or give us more items from bosses in general, just increase the number of items that drop. I'm not saying that's necessarily the right approach, but look, people do care about their best in slot. And if Blizzard doesn't increase the number of items that are dropping, increases the drop chances that you're just incentivizing split rating, which I'll be quite blunt about it. Split rating has always been and will always be horrible. Like, I feel like Blizzard to some extent doesn't understand these kind of things. It's like, oh, we're not increasing the drop chances. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna have everyone like in, uh, consider this in a hardcore guild and this does have a trickle-down effect It always has had the trickle-down effect that some guilds don't give a crap about that doesn't mean that other guilds don't and when something is the best thing to do Then that's obviously is something a lot of people even uh, lower down the line will care about But this is what top guilds are going to do because this is what people have been doing on retail for years They're just gonna 
do two free plus splits to get all the gear because that's how they stay competitive. And if you think that's not going to have an impact for the overall community, uh, then, well, you haven't been playing much world, modern World of Warcraft to the modern WoW community. And it's what it is. I'm not saying the modern WoW community is the best thing in the world. Certainly has a, It's certainly horrible. In fact, one of the biggest issues with World of Warcraft right now in retail is the community. And that, that has shown to have an impact in Classic. Hell, it has an impact even on private servers. You might believe it doesn't, but it absolutely does. Uh, an insid a, a, a very terrible impact, but it is an impact. Then we get to the issue of world buffs and how that will affect raiding. World, the world buff discussion has probably been the most controversial topic of discussion when it comes to Classic Fresh. An enormous number of people, like myself, are, are very much appreciative of the fact that Blizzard is removing world buffs. Because quite bluntly, we want to play our fucking characters. We don't want to have to, to spend time uh, at specific time uh, at specific hours in the day to get world buffs, uh, get them in a specific order like Songflower, Rend, Anixia, um, DM, uh, Oni buff. Get those, uh, then have to log out our fucking character, risk getting killed while we're get going into instance even as an entire raid, and then get screwed once we enter the raid because we someone might have made a mistake or you made a mistake or you yourself made a mistake and you die and you, all the effort is for nothing. If you believe that's a good way of playing the game, then quite bluntly, I disagree firmly on that issue. It's like, oh, but the ganking, the world PvP, like, fuck that. Let me play my bloody character. That's just it. And if you think world buffs are, oh, only the hardcore guilds cared about it, no, pugs cared about it, pugs. When pugs make it almost mandatory to for you to bring world buffs, if you want to get any loot or have any realistic chance of getting loot, then that's not the great way to have the game. And no, World of Altcraft can burn in a fire because that's how WoW feels these days in every version of it. Classic, TBC Classic, private server, retail. It's like, oh, you have to play two free alts. Well, yeah. I don't enjoy that. I think a lot of people don't enjoy not being able to play the char their main character, the one that they have the best gear on, the one that they put the most effort in, all that kind of stuff. Uh, they don't want uh, to be forced not to play that for however many hours each week for the raids you're doing uh, that entire week. So I think removing world buffs from the uh, uh, removing that uh, removing world buffs is a very welcome development. Some would argue, well, why not just have them in raid? Like, you can have the safety, you have, can have the Chromie item. Well, the issue with having them just in raiding, beyond the frustration that you still have to go get them, and you have to spend gold, um, you know, on the item itself, beyond that particular frustration of it, uh, the, the issue is what the impact that world buffs have in a raid. There is a great deal of toxicity, because, hey, losing all your world buffs is, uh, is a hugely detrimental impact on the raid so if you're the guy who wipes the raid you can be you can be sure that a lot of people will be pissed on you it's one thing to have a normal wipe those do happen but uh the way these things end up working uh in in uh, classic was not great um but but on top of that we're talking here about Classic. We're talking here about Classic Fresh, which is trying to be a recreation of Vanilla. Well, I can tell you for the damn fact that very, very few people and very few guilds cared about using world buffs. Certainly no one was using them every single week, or very few guilds used them every single week. Like, yeah, you would get some players in a guild using them. You know, you'd have some people going to Sunflower, Dire Mall, all that. But the idea that you would have an entire guild organized around this, I mean, it's a pain in the neck to do it today it certainly was um it certainly was more difficult significantly more difficult back then people did it guilds did it uh generally when they were on a hard boss and they're on farm or more likely progression like let's say a guild is on saffron i remember this having this discussion back in the days of vanilla about someone talking about like oh we're on saffron we spent uh, x number of days learning we're starting to cons use consumables and flasks once we now that we're starting to get a handle on the mechanics we're starting to use flasks we're starting to use uh, resistance gearing all that kind of stuff so people were doing that gradually and then it's like when they wanted to secure a kill uh, they would go in there pop a zg pop an anixia maybe get some Dire Maul buffs, but it was really, really rare. 
certainly not this idea that which is what happened in classic where the vast majority of the raiding community was using world buffs in a almost every single raid and almost every single person and the ridiculous notion that you would have world buffs for the entire raid that you would just go in there from the start of molten core blackwing there uh aq or nax and just keep your world buffs from start to finish and clear the entire damn thing that also in itself was pretty ridiculous or clear large portions of it you would use them for certain bosses you would use them on a certain day of progression because people did raid multi many more days back then i think the average was probably four certainly more than three free uh, some guilds rated three a lot of guilds rated four some even more than four five six don't be surprised these things did happen back in the day because you just needed those days to be able to do all of that content, the large number of bosses. Things have changed in that respect. People want to do things in two days. Uh, world buffs may help with that, though, but I think they create a large number of issues. And on top of that, there's also Blizzard's decision. Look, we want to make the content more difficult. We want to make it more interesting. You can't really balance around that if some people are going to be able to double, triple, or quadruple uh, their power, their DPS in particular. This is also what lead, led to the warrior meta having 10 plus 20 plus warriors in every single bloody raid team. This is what uh, led to that because warriors scale extremely well on world buffs. Remove those world buffs, things are going to be different. I mean, this is something people have brought up. Is the warrior meta still going to be the meta? Maybe. I'm not going to put my hand in the fire and say no or yes. I think it's a maybe. Uh, I do think, however, more comps will certainly be more viable, even on a very high level. More comps will be more viable. I mean, caster comps, range comps in general um, are going to be more viable. You're going to need less warriors. And the requirement of an enormous number of warriors for a top raid was hugely detrimental to the community. It's like it just makes warriors prima donna. Then it creates an enormous number of issues in terms of loot, in terms of gearing for guilds, and it leads to more and more split raiding. And that's also not something uh, that's great. And Blizzard should look to avoid that. So removing world buffs, from my perspective, is a net benefit uh, overall. And oh, imagine not killing a boss in 10 seconds. Yeah, imagine having bosses that were designed to be killed in minutes. Yes, minutes. Oof. Imagine 10, 15 plus minute boss fights, 20 plus minute boss fights, half an hour spending on a boss fight. Imagine that instead of killing it in 10 bloody seconds. Those things did happen back in the day, by the way. I remember getting a lot of uh, kills, not in vanilla, but in TPC, a lot of kills that were 10 plus minutes, 20 plus minutes easily. And that was very much the norm. Um, and with respect to world buffs, the only time that people actually did use world buffs on mass funnily enough, was early on in, in TPC when people realized, oh, we can get all these world buffs, we can have them for a lot of, uh, for our progression or our farming or whatever, um, and we can get all those benefits. That's something some guilds uh, realized in TPC. Not everyone did that though. Even back then, a lot of guilds didn't touch world buffs, even in TPC, uh, when things got uh, quite a bit more try hard and min maxi and all that kind of stuff, as opposed to how things uh, were in vanilla for the community. Overall, I think it's a good change to remove them, to disable them. Some people say, oh, why, why not just disable them from progression? Who gives a shit about progression? What a lot of people are going to do in their time is a farming. Now, sure, look, farming is never fun for long periods of time. I mean, I personally quit Classic because I couldn't stand doing Karagrul and Mag for long periods of time. Because that's not TBC for as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but also because it was so mind-bogglingly boring. So... It, being able to increase the rate speed, that's not necessarily a negative, but it's everything else that comes attached with world buffs uh, that is very negative. So Blizzard removing them, going to lead to more diversity in the rate comps, going to potentially lead to a better community, less toxicity. You do lose the grand coalitions between Horde and Alliance, but that created their own issues, as great as it was, because Horde has a population advantage. It doesn't ha necessarily have to be... Uh, mind-bogglingly uh, huge advantage but it just creates a situation where even a small advantage even when you're on a somewhat balanced server uh, even on those kind of servers it just leads to a, such a significant advantage for horde guilds or in even some cases on certain servers for alliance guilds it leads to such an advantage because some guilds uh, one faction can get in could get in into the raid almost guaranteed 
by even really trying, could get into a raid with our oral buffs, whereas the other faction couldn't. And if you don't believe that's fine, well, that's not really it. Now, some people will say, oh, there's too much tryharding. Yes, there is a lot of tryharding. That's how the people play the game today. Complaining about that will not change the fact of how people play the game. Kostin here, signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, enable notifications, and stay tuned for more. I'm going to be playing more of the classic uh, beta. I'm interested in seeing how the questing is going to be with 40%, but I do believe that they need to increase it. I also want to see rating with our world buffs. I want to see what they're going to do with respect to that if we ever get to that point. Stay tuned.